This man was like God in Cornerbrook, Newfoundland in the 1960s. Don Johnson is the former president of Hockey Newfoundland and Labrador, former president of the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association, now called Hockey Canada, and a former member of the Board of Canada's Sport Hall of Fame. He knows the man called Danky, and in a letter to the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame, on hearing of Frank's induction, says, quote, Frank Danky Dorrington adds nothing but class to your hall, end quote. Johnson says Danke was the right kind of player in the right kind of place for many years. He was the heart and soul of hockey in Cornerbrook for a long period of time, and as such was a very big part of the Provincial League itself. Danke probably drew more fans to the rinks than any other player in the history of Newfoundland hockey. And that is saying something for a province and a league that featured players like Jacques Allard, who many of us remember from the Windsor Maple Leafs of the 1960s, and star NHLers from the 1950s like Nick McCoskey and Howie Meeker, and native Newfoundlanders like Alex and George Faulkner. Danke was a come from away from Pictou County in Nova Scotia, but Johnson says, quote, you would be hard pressed to find anyone in Cornerbrook who did not love and respect Danke as a person and as a hockey player. Paul Seward felt exactly the same way. He's a former softball teammate who followed Danke's hockey career for the entire decade Danke was in Cornerbrook, and here's a quote. People still say Danke Dorrington was the best ever to play in Newfoundland. And here's a story from the closing of Memorial Stadium in St. John's in 2000, soon before Mile One Stadium was opened. Again, we quote, They love to hate Danke in St. John's because Cornerbrook always beat their team. During the final event at the stadium, the MC said, We have to get the ghost of Danke Dorrington out of the stadium, so let's have a big cheer. And those may have been the greatest words of praise ever given to Dorrington. Danke was a heck of a hockey player, a man who progressed through minor hockey in his hometown of Stellarton, to provincial and maritime junior championships with Cape Breton's Northside Victorias, and up the minor league ladder through the Eastern Hockey League until family obligations showed the man that Frank Danke Dorrington really is. Instead of pursuing every lad's dream of playing in the National Hockey League, he came home where better care could be found for a son with a mental challenge who needed family attention that only Frank and his wife Angie could provide from a solid home base. Danke Dorrington is being honored tonight as much for his hockey prowess, which you will hear was outstanding, but also for the life that he's lived quietly and without seeking recognition, but only because it was the right thing to do. It all started on outdoor rinks and ponds in Pictou County. There was no organized hockey and nor no formal coaching. He learned to skate and stick handle on New Glasgow's East River, playing hockey all day long after dark and after school when there was no ice. It was street hockey that took over. In 1947-48, at age 14, he was a member of the maritime champion Lords Midgets in Pictou County. Courtney Malcolm, inducted to this hall last year as a builder, watched the young Frank Dorrington play as a kid. I had been a scout uh, for any any of the teams. I'd have, I'd have been sure as heavens looking at that boy. His uh, first year in midget hockey, you you could uh, you could tell he had something going for him. He had a great set of hands, good great score, and as he got older, he got bigger and stronger, and uh, he was a pretty good junk by the time he he was. Uh, playing junior hockey. The next year, Danke and the same group of guys won the Maritime Juvenile title. In 1951, along with line mates Bert Dolling and Bill Billick and a few other Pictou County boys, he was recruited to provide some offense to the junior Northside Vicks. Bert, Bill, and Danke became one of the greatest lines ever in junior ranks and led Northside to the Maritime Championship while dethroning seven-time Nova Scotia winner Halifax St. Mary's along the way and line mate Bert Dowling had this to say. Uh, Danke was a fellow that uh, took nothing from anyone. You know, if you want to use your stick, I'll use it on you. If you want to go in the corner and let's go, uh, he would. And uh, he'd win them all unless someone hit him with his back turn. The only way we get him. <laughs> nice clean game back then, Frank. 
In summer of 1953, two weeks before a tryout with the New York Rangers, Danke broke an ankle playing baseball. That ended his 1953-54 hockey season, and some say it ended his chance at the NHL. But he didn't quit. The next season, he helped the Moncton Hawks advance to the Eastern Allen Cup Senior Hockey Finals. He played three more years in New Brunswick, twice leading the North Shore Hockey League in goals with Miramichi and earning MVP and All-Star honors in 1957-58. He was ready for minor pro and joined the Johnstown Jets of the East Coast Hockey League, where he played two seasons and was voted the team's fan favorite. He returned to Nova Scotia in 1960-61 and helped the Amherst Ramblers win the Eastern Canada Senior Hockey Championship and then made the move that topped his career. He went to Cornerbrook, where he became an icon in Newfoundland hockey. As playing coach, his Royals won four Herder Cups as Newfoundland Senior Hockey League champions, the first in his first year, 1961-62. The last time Cornerbrook had won that trophy was 26 years earlier in 1935. Playing until he was 40, Denke won three scoring titles and took his teams to four shots at the Allen Cup. He scored 360 goals, 551 assists, 911 points in league play on the Rock, had another 278 points in playoffs. And there were six teams in the league when he came to Cornerbrook. Four of the goalies went on to play in the NHL. His players said Danke was able to get 110% out of them. No one minded working hard in practice or making the extra effort in games. 